The homeowner tried in vain to slow the blaze with a garden hose. A fire authorities confirm his own wife started. It is horrible. It is everything we own. 20 years, 15 years, we've been living here 15 years and it's gone. Excuse me, get that out of my face. Authorities tell us Stephanie Seavey set the fire in a fit of rage, risking herself, five children and husband. We need some police down here immediately. High winds added fuel to the fire, putting others in danger too. The wind was blowing pretty hard and it gushed up our one while ago and it it spread across some treetops pretty far. Next door neighbors who were still grieving over their own tragedy also had to worry about losing their home. I'm so shocked for my brother, bearing my brother today, so, you know, but it's scary. The heat was so intense it set off some ammunition in the house and sent bullets flying. But still, neighbors tried to help. I don't know if there's any kids or anything on, so I grabbed the phone and called 911 and tried to get inside the house, but uh, front glass just blowed out of the house before I can get in there and the, I took my truck over. I was going to try to drag him stuff out of the way, but and it just went up from there. Can't believe it. With that, with something happening that close to you, you know, you don't know what you're going to do until I guess you experience it. When firefighters got on the scene, the house was already destroyed. Watch over your head, okay? Dozens worked to contain the blaze. Despite the tragedy of a family losing their home, authorities say miraculously no one was injured. Chloe Maroney, WVLT Volunteer TV News. As the sun sets at Eglin Air Force Base, these fresh young faces prepare for another burst on the road to becoming special tactics operators. It's basically something that they have to have in their back pocket. The exercise rotary wing helicopter call for fire. As the day turns to night, night vision provides their guiding light. This is their initial part of shoot, move, and communicate. And now for these 14 airmen, theories and principles learned in the classroom become hands-on training. Right 50. On target. Here's how it's carried out. Two-man teams work together, describing a target to an aircraft. In this case, a UH-1 Huey. From the ground to the eye in the sky, airmen inside the helicopter adjust fire to connect with the targets below targets anywhere from 300 to 1,000 meters away, an achievable challenge. Being able to bring our abilities and our skills to the fight and augment those forces is, uh, is a huge uh, force multiplier. And we're going to get ready to do it again, so be ready to adjust and continue operations. And as for those leading the instruction, former fighters themselves, those who have served time on the front lines. It's a mentorship program. Warriors leading warriors and training warriors. For an hour, teams run through the exercise, the hum of the helicopter steady, the striking of the targets ongoing. The flexibility of a rotary wing aircraft and its immediate response can save a lot of lives. And in months, saving lives is what these combat controllers will be sent out in the world to do. The threat of war is uh, scary to anybody out there, and uh, it's not a pretty picture. But uh, we are going to be very prepared to go and uh, do what's required out there. At Eglin Air Force Base, Karina Collins, WVLT Volunteer TV News. Well, East Coast girls are hit by really big those styles they wear. 468, loading them head motor. It's bad to the bone. Corvettes, they bad, you know. They just, they, they been around a long time. It's a passion when you get into this car, it gets in your blood. And I do it as a hobby to have things to do, and I like restoring it, taking one that needs restoring and putting it back to its original condition. Uh, you buy one you can fix up, it's about half the price of going to the dealer and buying one. Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Right down in Georgia. West Palm Beach, Florida. We go everywhere, all over the southeast. We, we just buy, trade, and sell, just have a good time. We love sitting around talking with the buddies and just have a good time. Drink a cold beer every now and then. <laughs> Just unique old cars. Every day is a nice day to buy a Corvette. This is real. Sometimes these soldiers come here when it's 100 degrees. But on this day in Fort Knox, Kentucky, it felt like five below zero. This is what the 278th Armored Cavalry Regiment calls battle-focused training. 
Back in Knoxville, old 700 hours, myself and photojournalist Daniel Backner board this Army National Guard Black Hawk helicopter. Flying at 3,000 feet, a trip to Fort Knox will take 90 minutes. Once on the ground, we we'll quickly find out it's not just a job, it is an adventure. We'll teach our soldiers what to do, uh, then we'll go out and we'll let them practice it, and then we evaluate everything. The 278th Armored Cavalry Regiment is an enhanced brigade, the only one in the U.S. in the reserve structure. They've got the firepower to back it up. The weapon of choice? The M1 Abrams battle tank. Safety is tower. What's the status on the uh, bore sight line tanks? Over. I'm going there now. Your range flag is up. Known as Yano Range Landing, it is four miles long and a half mile wide, complete with automated targets that simulate what these soldiers could face abroad. Next stop took us to another testing ground where we find another workhorse for the 278. These are what's called Bradley's M3s and A2s. They're part tank and they're part troop carrier. They even shoot tow missiles. Help your scout me here we go out and find the enemy and call the big boys come blow them up. They've got the firepower. That's 7.62 for okay. the coax machine gun. This is? This is 25 millimeter uh, heat round, high explosive. Uh-huh. This is 25 millimeter Sabo round. These guardsmen and the 278 go through a lot to serve, protect, and defend you and me. Sergeant Major James Pippin is also Director of Engineering, Diversity Programs at UT Knoxville. We are in a high state of uh, security right now, security alert, and uh, I think that uh, based on what's happening in the world, as you well know, there's pockets of uh, things going on in the world today, and what we try to do is to uh, make sure that everything's secure in our area. Then we'll start running engagements. We're not in military uniform. Lieutenant Colonel Frank McCauley is serving his country as an agent for the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. If it's deemed that we need to go and, and enforce the national will. I think that's our job to do. It. We don't question that. But unlike true combat, this drill wraps up with everyone returning home safely. If the regiment got the call tomorrow, we would we would be prepared to go. Heads. Call it a comeback of sorts. A return from the disabled list, if you will. For Bailey Stewart, an accident may have taken his arm, but not his spirit as he returned to the field of play for the first time to see his teammates and help coach them to victory. Play to three! Well, I was a little bit tickled. It felt good. Go, run! They just run up and they hug him and I'm so glad you're back and I'm so glad you're here and it was just nothing. It was, they're kids, it's nothing for them. It's not. it's just nothing. It's Bailey. It's just Bailey. It was evident that number 55 had been missed. So much so, Bailey's teammates in the entire league were wearing his number on their jerseys. It was like everything. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, everybody associated with it are all good people. That's just, I guess, one way of showing them that. You know, they're supporting us and ready for us to get back out there. Bailey's dreams of being a major leaguer may never come true, but it may be the words of Dave Dravecki, a former major league pitcher who lost his arm as well, that could help Bailey overcome all odds in life. He said that I'm going to be doing it soon. Trust in Jesus. When they're young, you wonder sometimes what they get and don't get. But this young boy was so perceptive. I think more important than anything else was me acknowledging the fact that he had gone through this. It was much easier for him to be able to relate to me because we were both alike. I think it's going to make him a stronger person. We're very fortunate that Bailey's alive and we thank God for that every second of every moment. In Blount County, Brandon Fisher, WVLT Volunteer TV.